What's up guys, Randis Reviews here with you again. And we are once more doing a military surplus rifle unboxing. I picked this rifle up from Access Arms. They do a pretty good job of packing their rifles usually, but UPS absolutely just threw this one around. Look at how it's buckled in the middle there. The box itself is all squishy. The ends are soggy wet. So I don't know where all of this water came from, but the bottom part of this package is visibly soft. It's all kinds of taped up. There's a big fissure in the box here. This ends the same story as the other one. Completely soft and floppy. I mean, look at that. Your box shouldn't just be able to ball up like a wad of paper. That's ridiculous. So UPS did me dirty on this one. I surely hope that the rifle on the inside is still in decent condition. If you know what kind of bayonet this is, post it down in the comments. That's what we'll be opening the box with today. It's just floppy. Look at these layers of floppy, soppy, wet cardboard. This rifle was actually scheduled to be delivered yesterday, and for some reason, they had to reschedule that delivery to today, and then this is how I get the box. So I guess it went back to the local facility overnight, and they just kicked it around, left it out in the rain, I don't know. All right, so we have some packing paper. Luckily, there's a fair amount of that paper in here. Good on access arms. But this is exactly why I go over how the companies pack the rifles when I do my reviews. One of the most important things when you're mail ordering a gun like this, is it gonna come in the same shape that you bought it in? You would hope as much. They pack the bolt separately. That's always a good thing. There's our bolt. Sneak peek to what the rifle is. Oh no. Well, I see a crack that definitely wasn't in there in the pictures from where I bought it. In large though, it does look to have survived. Today, we are taking a look at a very cool rifle. This is an Italian Carcano Type I rifle made for the Japanese Navy prior to World War II. It looks a lot like a Japanese Type 38 Arasaka. Barrel bands and stock configuration is very Arasaka-like. It's a two-piece stock just like the Type 38 is, but this rifle was made in Italy with a Carcano action, and you guys know how much we like Carcanos on this channel. So that crack I was talking about is right here in the wrist. I did not see that crack at all on the photos on Access's website. Whether or not it had that going into it being shipped to me, I'm not 100% sure but it surely didn't stand out to me at the time. Other than that, I was very lucky in that this rifle looks like it has come to me complete and unmolested for the most part. Take a look at the bluing on this rifle. Man, that is pretty. It's like a high polished blue, not worn at all. That continues down on the barrel here. Nice shiny blue, looks really good. The stock, it's definitely seen some action. It's a little bit rough. Handling marks. The bolt looks pretty good. It's still nice and shiny for the most part. And as far as Kakano actions goes, this one is actually fairly smooth. Access Arms said that the board was in good condition and was nice and shiny, and I trust their assessment. Let's run down what the Type I actually is. With Imperial Japan's invasion of China in 1937 and the kickoff of the Second Sino-Japanese War, also more commonly known as World War II, the Japanese arsenal system was at full production capacity, attempting to keep the Imperial Army supplied with rifles. This caused a problem for the Imperial Japanese Navy, who also had need of rifles. The Army's massive demand for new rifles made it virtually impossible for the Navy to secure any contracts of their own. As a result, the Imperial Navy had to look outside of Japan for small arms. As it turns out, Italy had a substantial arsenal system with the capacity to produce large numbers of their cost-effective Carcano design, which they had been using in one form or another since before the Great War. In 1937, Japan had the Turney Royal Arms Factory design a rifle sporting the 1891 Carcano action, but fitting the mold of the Japanese Type 38 in most other aspects. This rifle was designated the Type I, where the I stands for Italian, as opposed to the number one. Production of this rifle began in 1938 at three Italian arsenals, Gardon Valtrampia, FNA, Brescia, and Beretta. Now there is some controversy around the production numbers of the Type I. You will see the number 120,000 thrown around along with the numbers 100,000 to 140,000. These estimates come from the number prefixes on a Type I's serial number. Each serial number on a Type I rifle will begin with a letter prefix. The prefix on my particular example here is K. Each letter designates a batch of up to 10,000 rifles. Serial numbers with letters from A all the way to N have been reported, with the majority ranging from the letter A 
to L. This gives us our 100,000 to 140,000 estimate for total number produced. But apparently, the contract that Japan had with Italy was only for 60,000 rifles total. So these numbers aren't exactly adding up. Either the contract was for far more than 60,000 rifles, or each letter prefix block ended up having far fewer than 10,000 rifles each. I don't think anyone really knows the truth of how many of these were made. Maybe one day someone like CN Arsenal will do a deep dive on the subject and answer these questions. Either way, this is a fairly uncommon rifle. They were only produced from 1938 to 1939, and they remained in Japanese service until the end of World War II in 1945. Now, as I said, these rifles were contracted for the Imperial Japanese Navy. So I'm assuming they saw most of their use on ships and with the Japanese Imperial Marines. I'm doing a little bit of speculating here, but it would only make sense to me that these probably saw their way into more convenient conventional combat at one point or another as well, especially late in the war when Japan was scrambling to put rifles together. I believe the majority of these rifles were brought back over to the U.S. as war trophies. From what I've observed, the majority do not have import marks. My particular rifle is not import marked. Even though these rifles are fairly scarce, they're really not considered that desirable for Carcano collectors or Japanese rifle collectors, and I don't really know why. I think having that crossover makes it even that much cooler. In my mind even more desirable than most other Carcanos and most other Japanese rifles like your Arasakas. You will not find a Type I with a chrysanthemum because these were never marked as property of the Emperor. They don't really have any Japanese markings whatsoever. The only marks you'll find on them is the serial number there and then a couple of little Italian proof marks. These rifles come in two different stock lengths. Mine appears to be a shorter length rifle because I put it up side by side with my Type 38, and they're basically the same length. This one might actually be just a little bit shorter than my Type 38 is. Some of these rifles will have a stock that's about an inch longer than a Type 38, and there's some controversy surrounding the origin of the different stock lengths as well on this rifle. Some people say that the Italians just produced the stocks a little bit too long, and the Japanese shaved a bunch of them down when they came into Japan. Japanese service, and then others say that the longer stock versions were specifically requested by Japan for their larger soldiers. I really don't know what to think about either of those stories. Sometimes you'll run across these rifles with a completely unfinished stock. This one is finished, but if you see one of these and it seems really light in color and doesn't really feel slick, don't think it's been sanded on or refinished necessarily. It might be one of those that was just never finished in the first place. So we have this sort of Franken rifle. Let's go over some of the differences between this and the Japanese Type 38. So the rear sight here is a Type 38 sight. Handguard is set up like a Type 38. The stock is profiled similar to that of a Type 38, but is a little bit different, especially towards the comb area here. This trigger guard is quite a bit larger than a Type 38 is, but the magazine dump button is basically the same. The middle band is exactly like a Type 38. The front band here, exactly like a Type 38. The front sight, however, is a little bit different. The Type 38 has two protective wings that come off either side. It is not on the Type I rifle. And the Type 30 Japanese bayonet fits the Type I just perfectly. But one question I have about this rifle, and maybe one of you know the answer to this. If you do, let me know down in the comments. Were these rifles issued with bayonets? I haven't seen anything about that. I've never seen a bayonet that someone referred to as a Type I bayonet. So were bayonets issued with these rifles or were they just bayonetless? I definitely like to know about that. Our action here is straight up 1891 Carcano, straight bolt, rounded bolt knob. Everything to do with the bolt is exactly like any other Carcano basically. As far as I know, the bolt parts are interchangeable. The bolt faces might be a little bit different because the cartridge is different. So split bridge, Receiver, just like a Carcano. Unlike a Carcano, it is cut or stripper clip. This takes standard 6.5 by 50 millimeter Mauser style Japanese stripper clips. And it has a five round internal Mauser style magazine, just like a Japanese Type 38. Since the beginning of this video, I have taken this out to the range and shot it. And I must say, of every Carcano I have, this one has the absolute smoothest action. It seems to have the highest production quality of any Carcano that I have. This rifle has a very nice fit and finish overall, and the Italians really did a great job 
job on this. So it's kind of funny that the nicest Carcano in my collection was a Carcano that wasn't even used by Italy. One of the unfortunate differences between this and the Type 38 is the tang area of the rifle. As I just played earlier, this one has a tang crack and I hate to see that, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. In a Type 38, there is a metal reinforcing piece for the tang that carried over into the Type 99 and they would put one on the underside as well. So there'd be a metal piece that would come all the way out here to your partial pistol grip reinforcing that part of the stock. And something I've noticed over years of collecting Millsurps is I quite often see tang cracks on Carcanos. I don't ever recall seeing a tang crack on an Arasaka. So I guess the Japanese knew what they were doing with those reinforcing tang plates. This is a pretty dang heavy rifle. The specs say that it's coming in at eight pounds, 11 ounces. From just holding it, it feels heavier than that to me. The overall length on these range from between 49 and a half inches to about 50 and a half inches, depending on whether you have a long stock or a short stock. And the barrel length is apparently slightly shorter than a Type 38 barrel coming in at right around 30 inches. I'm so glad it was not battered and beaten too bad in shipping. From the way that box looked, I was super worried. But after after getting this out of the range and pulling the trigger on it a couple times, I am super, super happy with my purchase. I'm glad I ran across this on Access's website when I did, and I'm happy to have it in my surplus collection, filling the spots of both Carcano and Japanese service rifle. That's pretty cool in my opinion. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you notice something about this rifle that I didn't talk about, make sure you let me know down in the comments. I love reading those comments. I learn something on pretty much every video I put out. If you would like to see more military surplus rifle videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I will have far more content incoming hopefully for years to come. And if you know someone that might enjoy this video or find it useful, please share it because that helps the channel out more than anything else. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.